Hi, it's me, Jazzy. I'm back with another tech-related video, and today we're looking at some old tech. Yes, from 1961, this is a Sullivan and Griffiths Mica Condenser Decade Box. Now, I picked this up recently, along with a bunch of other calibration stuff. Now, it's the first Decade Box I've come across that weighs this much and is this huge, which makes me think maybe it was a primary standard back in the day. Well, I reckon we need to get this over on the bench and take a look at it. So this is a Sullivan and Griffiths Mica Condenser Decade Box. Now, if you think this looks big, that's because it is. So for scale, here's the one I normally use on the channel. And this is not exactly small. This is absolutely huge. I don't know what this weighs, but it is extremely heavy. Now, Sullivan and Griffiths were known for making good quality stuff. I didn't specifically buy this box. I picked it up recently as part of a job lot of calibration equipment, and this came with it, and this had to be saved. These would have cost an absolute fortune back in the day. I've done some measurements with it, and it seems to be okay. It's, it's pretty on a par with my Muirhead one, which I know is highly accurate. This has a residual of 171 picofarads. My Muirhead has a residual of 160 picofarads. It's a Sullivan and Griffiths Mica Condenser Precision. There's a serial number and it's from 1961. Total capacitance of one microfarad. Now, I suspect, given the weight and size of this unit, that this may well have been a primary standard decade box used in a standards lab back in the day. Now, there is a little plate on the front of the box here, which has survived rather well, and is the original information from H.W. Sullivan Limited on care of this condenser and how to preserve the original high order of accuracy. And it tells you how to store the condenser away from humid atmospheres and excessive temperatures, which is good advice when you're dealing with lab standards, as they can measure differently at different temperatures. It's so good to see the original information still on the Decade Box after all these years. And it does say in the bottom paragraph that a standard of this superlative quality should be subjected to expert examination and it's advised that it should be sent back to our works at such intervals so they can examine it and if necessary carry out any readjustment to stop it drifting away from the national standard values. That's why I suspect that this may have been a primary standard back in 1961. You can see from the terminals on the front, this is no ordinary decade box. Look at those terminals with the high potential, low potential, and a screen. In terms of decades, you've got tenths, hundredths, and thousandths. Now that is not easy to say. There's a little note on the corner of the decade box saying, before using this condenser, refer to the calibration certificate. And a rather disappointing little sticker next to it saying it's not in the calibration system. What I'd like to do is I'd like to take this apart and have a look what's inside and see why it's so heavy. My guess is it's probably set in wax or something. So I think, as usual, we need to undo the screws. I know some of this calibration equipment I have is a little bit esoteric and it's not to everyone's taste, but bear with me. Some of it can be interesting. Now, these should... <sighs> Ah, a rather pleasing noise. Oh, ha, <laughs> no such noise with that one. That was a bit easier. Okay. Now, uh, ah, there we go. Aha, there we go. Brilliant. Right. Ah, now we can see what's going on. So that's just the back of the plate there so i can give this a good clean up while it's off uh, these will all need a good clean okay so what have we got on here to clean contacts remove three countersunk screws and lift off disc a smear of gulf seal elvo number no. one a oil i'm not sure i have any of that to be lightly applied to each contact with a camel hair brush that's very specific 
If contacts are very dirty, first clean with carbon tetrachloride. Hmm, not sure I have any of that either. What that means is we can take this disc off and give the contacts a good clean up. I normally use just IPA and cotton bud to get in all the difficult areas and then we'll find something more suitable to lubricate it with. Right, let's lift the first one off. Oh, look at those beautiful contacts. Multi-layered contacts. Look at that, look at that brass wiper contacts as you turn it round. I'd love to know what's in the depths of this box, but I really don't want to delve too deeply because I don't know what exactly what's in there. And the wax seals are still intact. This has not been opened, so. Ah. I'm going to leave well alone, but I am going to give the contacts a good clean. So we'll do the same with those. You can see where it's been left on zero quite a lot. And they've obviously used four, seven and nine quite a lot. <laughs> it's funny how you can tell that, but on this decade, Lily zero, one and nine were in demand. And the one that I've taken apart, obviously zero, one, three and nine so you can see the back there going to give this bit of a clean up and also clean the contacts but i suspect that this box is more accurate than any of the measuring devices i've got here for capacitance so here we go just using some good old ipa and a cotton bud to get rid of the worst of the surface dirt on these contacts. Now, I've speeded up the footage to make it a little bit less boring, and I'll spare you the fact that I went over it multiple times to make sure I got all the dirt from the contacts and also from under the wiper. Now, contact PR is something that I've been recommended from people in the know that look after these kind of things, and it's a good alternative to using the light oil that they would have used to use and just a thin smear is all that's needed just to lubricate the contacts and to prevent any oxidization now the first disc can go back on i've got three screws to go back in now the second one can come off and a similar switch arrangement and again i'll go through the same process cleaning off the contacts with ipa and a little smear of contact pr it's the second disc back on and now off with the third one and a slightly different switch arrangement in this one and some weird residue on the bottom of the disc. I'll have to give that a bit of a clean. Seems reluctant to come off but I've got any loose particles off. It's more the switch contacts I'm concerned with. On this one I'm going to need to turn the plate round to get to the inner contacts. I want to make sure I've got to every area. And then back on with the final disc. Beautiful. Something very satisfying about working on these kind of boxes. Now we can put the front plate back on carefully. Fits nicely. Uh, just reattach the screen and tighten these up. And the little nut on the top. Make sure we've got good contact. I have cleaned up all the pieces of the contacts while they were off. Again, I've cleaned up with IPA. Okay, and now the knobs can go back on. That's one. And two. And now before I do any measuring with this box, I'm going to exercise these back and forth because I've cleaned and lubricated the switches. I'll make sure I get best possible results from this box. Now I will spare you the boring process of me sitting here measuring this box with the LCR meter. For this I'm using the Zoe DQ02 because it's the most accurate capacitance meter I've got at the moment. And it seems to give me fairly consistent results. We know there's a residual on the box of 171 picofarads and the residual measured on the Zoe at 170.2. So this box is believed to be 0.01% or 100 ppm. So the measurements I've got from the box are good, but the box is far superior to the LCR meter I'm using. This is the best I can do for now, as I don't have access to a lab grade LCR meter at the moment. 
as you can see the measurements from the first decade are pretty consistent and so that ranges from one nanofarad up to 10 nanofarads I'll save you having to sit there while I test these. I will generally go through and make sure these readings are repeatable. The standard on this is to do them three times and log the results from those. And I will say it's extremely consistent, this box. The measurements are repeatable pretty much every time. On the middle decade, that ranges from 10 nanofarads up to 100 nanofarads and again as you can see the results are pretty consistent and pretty accurate. That would indicate what we suspect that this was a primary standard decade box back in its day. And on the final decade this goes from 100 nanofarads up to 900 nanofarads. Again pretty consistent across the board. And to get one microfarad on this box, you have to use 900 nanofarads on the first decade and 100 nanofarads on the next one. And that gave us a reading of 1.003. So a really, really accurate box. It's an absolutely beautiful thing. It may not be to everyone's taste. And you may think, why on earth do I need such a thing? I'm just curious and fascinated by these standards. And they're still really useful for measuring and comparing devices against even in this day and age. What a fantastic and beautiful piece of equipment to use. So there you go, it's a pretty unusual bit of lab equipment. The 1961 Sullivan and Griffiths Mica Condenser. It certainly weighs a ton and it gives some really accurate readings. I will test it again if I get the opportunity to use a more accurate LCR meter, but I'm really happy with the readings I'm getting from that box. It's in great condition and well worth saving. And it'll be a welcome addition here to my collection of lab standards and decade boxes. It's not for everyone, but then I am pretty crazy about decade boxes and lab standards, and they do come in handy for testing and measuring equipment still. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video, taking a look at this rare old decade box. As always, massive thanks to everyone for watching, sharing, liking, and subscribing. And big thanks to all my YouTube and Patreon members. Don't forget, you can support me on Patreon and buy me a coffee, which helps to support the channel and keeps me making more videos. I'll be back soon with another tech-related video, but in the meantime, take care, and I'll see you on the next one.